is Bronze and Modern Gods. I'm John. And I am Richard. Ah, uh, see, I like this new introduce yourself <laughs> thing that we're doing. I, I'm a fan of that. Hey, if you're not following us on Facebook and Instagram at Bronze and Modern Gods, why not? You're obviously watching the videos. Spend more time with us. Come on. We like you. Uh, subscribe, like this video, hit the notification bell. It's a bonus episode featuring your questions and comments, plus a visit from none other than Adam from City Limits Comics on Instagram. You know him, you love him. CGC does not. <laughs> <laughs> That's putting it mildly, yes. <laughs> He's going to share with us his underrated book of the week, and it's a shocker. Uh, that's all I'll tease with that. Plus, we have a new feature this week, Richard. What is it? We have a new feature. Yes, it is the Instagram Market Watch with Ali and Bill from Elite Comics 11 on Instagram. What major sales are happening on Instagram that aren't being reported on most of the sites? We're going to cover the big movers of this week. But first, it's time for viewer mail. You've got mail. All right. Our first piece of viewer mail is from our friend down under, Mark Oldrod. I, I, Mark, I just massacred your name. <laughs> and I said, Mike, Mark Oldroyd. Mark writes, hi, John and Richard. Just a note to thank you for the heads up on Justice Society of America with the Alex Ross covers. Oh, we covered that a few uh, weeks mm -hmm. ago. I had no idea these existed, and you were right. They are completely under the radar. Won an eBay auction for issues two, three, four, five, six, and seven for two pounds fifty pence. Wow. wow. These will join my Alex Ross cover collection. They should. Uh, if you guys haven't seen these covers, they're beautiful. And again, you can get them for a song. Just ask Mark. Uh, he got it for a song. <laughs> Richard, uh -huh. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, my my uh, viewer mail comes from Peter Eddy. And this is in regards to uh, my underrated pick of the week last week was Wonder Woman Black and Gold, uh, specifically the be beautiful cover by Warren Liu. Uh, it is amazing. And it's hard to get. Uh, so Peter, uh, Peter replies, the Wonder Woman Black and Gold is only available on Mutant Beaver with a 1 in 25 var uh, variant. This is the only site that still had copies of it available at the time. Okay. However, uh, there are still some uh, still some available on the Black Flag Comics website. Well, at least it was when I posted this. I checked. Unfortunately, now they're sold out. Oh. This, co this cover is absolutely gorgeous. I picked up the sign set for $100 with free shipping. I'm buying the non-graded so I can send it to CBCS and get it back this year. <laughs> Me? No, it's no, it's true. It's true. I actually bought I bought raw versions of the book, uh, and I also bought one CGC 9.8 graded book that I will probably get sometime around Christmas. So, and that's this just the reality of the way that uh, CGC is doing things right now. But yeah, so if you can come across this book, Mutant Beaver uh, had some copies. I noticed sometimes they they find additional copies and put them up. Uh, same with Black Flag. So I would go and check. Uh, these are available on the and the aftermarket. You can find them on um, on eBay. I have a feeling this book is really going to be the next Legion of Superheroes number twenty three. Uh, you know that 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 showstopper of a cover that's going to have uh, extended value. So if you could track down one of these. Buy it now while you can buy it for uh, a reasonable price. And uh, I, I, I'm really feeling this book. Yeah, kudos to you. You called that out and tons of comments and responses from people on last week's episode. If you take a look, you'll see them. Uh, so I'm glad that you guys got a chance. If you did, if you did not, don't waste time. Go to the Henry Rollins website, uh, Black Flag Comics. Henry Rollins, right? <laughs> no, it's not Henry Rollins. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, next a piece of, of viewer mail comes from Patrick Montero, who writes, would you guys be able to film a Father's Day video? I'm thinking of a what to buy your geek dad type video for the non-geek family members who wouldn't know comics to buy for their geek dads. My wife and kids have no clue about comics and wouldn't know the difference between a graphic novel from an ash can. How dare they? <laughs> For years, I've been gifted geek tchotchkes, toys, clothing, and although I'm always grateful to receive any gift, there are times that in my heart of hearts, I think, but what I really wanted was a Patsy Walker, number one. Hey, <laughs> that's my area. 
or even a Turok number one gold foil edition. Oh, you're the one, Patrick. Okay. <laughs> uh, it would be great if I can say, hey, honey, check out this cool video that these two geeks made. Hint, hint. <laughs> Keep up the great work, John and Richard. As a 41-year-old geek, I'm glad you're offering information that I can relate to. I appreciate all your story recommendations. Richard, a Father's Day gift guide. That's yeah. not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, that, that is not a bad idea. You know, just just like uh, just like he says, I get a lot of gifts that people think are cool, but uh, aren't really aren't really that cool. So it'd be nice to to actually give some advice to the people out there who are shopping for people like us. I don't know if we'll do a full video because everyone's taste is different. You know, Richard likes Archie covers. You know, with Betty and Veronica. I appreciate a great Millie the Model or a Patsy Walker myself, but I will tell you one thing that I do that is so obvious and it's so brutally, uh, <laughs> so brutally honest that it, it almost works against me, but it, it does work. I print out my want list and I leave it on the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes things easy, doesn't it? It does. And like here, and I make it really obvious. Like I have a big headline in bold type comics I'm looking for, and then I list them. And hopefully, someone picks up on it as they walk by to make breakfast or whatever, and makes a note <laughs> go on eBay. Try it; it works. Well, I had I had my wife actually wanted to buy me a present, and she reached out to you, and you helped her pick a, a a slab for me. So I appreciate that. Yeah. If you've got a geek friend, you know, that knows your wife and your kids, just tell him to tell them, you know, <laughs> utilize your network of nerddom. Uh, that's, that's our recommendation. Richard, what do you have next? Okay. Uh, my, my next comment comes from Jason Brownell. Again, again, <laughs> very, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a great guy. And he's also very, uh, he likes to, he likes to comment on our videos. I appreciate Jason much. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are just about halfway through the year, and it seems you guys have all have your yearly goals complete. What books make your wish list and goals for the second half of 2021? Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? This has really just been a just a blockbuster year for books yeah. that are on my list. I've I've knocked off all the most of the big books out there that that I want. I I, I am comfortable in the state of my collection. There are some books I'm still looking for, uh, specifically some Star Wars books, mainly because right now is a good time before we get to the fall and we get we get uh, the, the the Star Wars series that are coming. There are, uh, Dr. Aphra is one of my favorite characters. Although Dr. Aphra is not directly uh, mentioned in any of the Star Wars mythos for, for Disney shows, she is an important character to, to Star Wars in general. So I, I'm confident that at some point we're going to see her. And um, so I've been been collecting her her uh, first appearances. Darth Vader number three is her first appearance. The variant cover for Darth Vader three, I've always coveted. That that cover is gorgeous with Darth Vader standing over her, holding out his hand uh, to to uh, save her from falling off a, a ledge. Yeah, Awesome cover. I, that's That's a book that I am still looking for for a reasonable price. Right now, it's going for a nine point eight, like two thousand twenty two hundred dollars, which just a lot of money to pay for um, a book of its age. Father's so, Day, coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the Father Father's Days in the future combined. <laughs> so, so that's my first pick. My second pick is also uh, a Doctor Afro book, specifically Doctor Afro number one. Uh, there is a gorgeous one in um, one in twenty five cover that has the two main uh droid characters you've got you got just two... or whatever their names are <laughs> we've got the two major droid characters you got bt1 and, <laughs> <laughs> and triple zero uh who is the other character uh it's as an assassin droid it's just this it's just great characters they are uh I don't want to say comic relief because it's all it's all gallows humor that they make, but uh, it's they're great characters, they're great ass, uh, assets to Doctor Afra, and um, I think they are, they are a huge part of her popularity. So this cover features the two of them. It's a very dark cover. It's a very obviously susceptible to spine ticks. So mm. I'm looking for a graded version. Uh, right now, graded books are what I'm looking for, just because I don't want to go through for the PC. I don't want to go through the hassle of finding a book and then sending it off to get graded and waiting 
you know, yeah. an extended period of time. So I'm looking for a 9.8 graded of this book. Um, and uh, when I find it, I'll, I'll pick it up and add it to the PC. It's uh, going to be the end of May when this goes live. And I have fast track standard books, fast track standard books that have been sitting uh, scheduled for grading since March 31st. Okay. When did you schedule it for 2028? I mean, let's get it going guys. Um, congratulations. Do you have a clone wars one in 25? Uh, I have the, the clone wars, the, uh, the one and one, the, the 1000 variant. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, just, I know that's a hot book. I, me and my star Wars knowledge is showing. <laughs> I just no, my, one. I bought that uh, back when it was expensive, mm -hmm. um, uh, but before it got to be astronomically expensive. Yes. So that's one of the purchases I'm happy I made. There are a lot of books in my collection now that if I had to buy them now, yeah. like uh, my Ultimate Fallout 4 um, newsstand edition, I paid 900 plus dollars for that when it came, you know, when uh, I bought it. And at the time, I thought that was that was crazy money. I remember you got coverage from Comic Tom, yeah. <laughs> right? Because it, it was the highest paid for that book at the time, uh, and now it's you know that price is is uh, laughable. If uh, it's you know it's you know it's a seven hundred seven thousand dollar book at this point, eight thousand dollar book, uh, I I wouldn't pay that much for it now, you yeah. know. So it's you know there are a lot of books that are in that category. Uh, so yeah, if you have books that are that are on your wish list. I would not hesitate to buy it uh, before you start to see it just escalate beyond you know your your capabilities. Fantastic Four number one, which is always one has been on my uh, wish list, is I can't afford it unless yeah. I sell a, a huge chunk of my collection. You can to, sell an Ultimate Fallout Four newsstand edition. I think you have uh, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know that's it's, it's like you know it's. Change, trading play. one Ferrari for another Ferrari, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you're not oh. gaining anything at that point. <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 it's a crazy market and, and I don't expect it to go to get any less crazy anytime soon. I have made some good progress myself. Uh, I, first I saw this question from you, Jason, and I was like, oh boy, my report card's going to be really poor, but you reminded me. Yeah. I I've kind of whipped through some stuff. I finally got my yellow claw. Number one, mm -hmm. I got my Tales of Suspense 58 and 59, still severely underrated books, in my opinion. Those are set to explode. Um, I got a Strange Tales 114, which is mm -hmm. actually the first Silver Age Captain America appearance with the Human Torch, but it's not really Cap. Um, I've got my Avengers 4. I got my Cap 100. I've got a Marvel Boy number two. I still need to get a Marvel Boy number one. That is one thing that's still missing from my my get list from 2021 mm -hmm. and we mentioned it earlier it's so funny that someone mentioned it but i really want a patsy walker number one uh if you've never seen it it's got this black cover which is really tough somebody had one on a live sale on instagram and someone texted me i wasn't watching the live sale and i missed it by seconds and i'm yeah. still kicking myself because that book is so tough uh so i i'm kind of proud i i think um those are my my next goals. There's that Marvel Boy one, maybe a Patsy Walker one. I would love uh, Astonishing Comics uh, three, four, and five, and six, which are Marvel Boy turns into Astonishing Comics with issue three, mm -hmm. but there are still Marvel Boy stories in those uh, later issues. I used to have them. I sold them. I kick myself every day. I'm almost done with my Yellow Claw run already. With, you know, all four issues. It was yeah, real time. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm I'm making some headway. I'm making some headway. So thanks for asking, Jason. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Tales of Suspense fifty eight fifty nine. You have been looking for those forever, and the Yellow Claw as well. I got um, beauty copies of that fifty eight and fifty nine. I'm shocked at I'm shocked at how low I got them for and how high to grade they are. Grade they are. I'm, I pressed them. I'm waiting to send them uh, after I got my Captain America one seventeen, which I graded as an eight point five. I got it back from CGC a few weeks ago with the staple popped in a 5.5 grade. I'm like, I'm not sending blank in for a while when it comes to non-modern books. I'm just mm -hmm. not doing it. I'm They got to get their act together. Right. Uh, more CGC bashing later this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems to be a popular pastime nowadays. I know. And I don't mean to, but it's guys, the truth. You bring it on yourselves. I mean, yeah. 
All right, speaking of Instagram live sales and things that are happening in real time, we have our new segment this week where we cover notable sales on Instagram that aren't being reflected on GPA or even Go Collect. These other sites, not to trash them, we use them daily, mm -hmm. but they reflect what's going on on auction houses like Heritage, uh, Comic Collect, I think Comic Link, uh, and, and of course eBay. But they have no real method of tracking Instagram live sales. It's not scientific. You're kind of going anecdotally, mm -hmm. right, Richard? It's it's right. tough to do that. So this right. is, there's a lot of activity in this space, and we thought it deserved some sort of coverage. So joining us today uh, from Elite Comics 11, actually that's Elite underscore Comics 11 on Instagram, to share three big notable sales from the past week are our friends Ali and Bill. But first, here's a really cool intro for it. And here they are now from Elite Comics 11 on Instagram. If you're not following it, why not? It is both Ali and Bill. What's going on, guys? Oh, hey. hey, guys. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good. Going well. Uh, so we thought of this segment to kind of shine a light on sales that really aren't being reflected in any of the traditional ways through GPA or auction trackers and things like that because – it, we hear we get emails from people and DMs from people saying, "Hey, I didn't know all this Instagram stuff was happening. Should I check it out?" And we keep saying, "Yes, you need to go on Instagram because it's real time." And with the market as crazy it is as it is and books exploding, you're kind of missing out. So you guys have a few milestones to report this week. Yeah, so I mean, Elite Comics Eleven were the premier consignment page on Instagram, and so we're always moving books. Um, so yeah, we have a few that we wanted to highlight. So I'll go ahead and start out. So this yeah. one, the first one's like not a surprise. It's the first Shang Chi nine point six white pages. We got a movie trailer. It's the first time we're seeing this on the big screen. Uh, there's a thirst for an Asian superhero. Um, done big in the MCU. So 9.6 white pages sold on Elite Comics 11 for $5,500. That was a CGC copy. So just to illustrate what I'm talking about is the last sale on a GPA, on being reported on GPA, which is this month, May 2021. Well, I guess it's June now. Uh, <laughs> is for $4,828. So there's already a difference there. And this isn't, you know, to crap on GPA because I use GPA, I subscribe to GPA, I swear by it. But I also see what's happening over here. And I want to make sure people know. Yeah, well... Extremely nice copy, 9.6 white, extremely high grade. Um, but yes, I mean, there's a lot of transactions, a lot of hype, uh, a lot of justified hype. It's the first time on that IP, like I said. So yeah, that's, but there definitely is a lot more transactions than are being reported. All right, uh, Bill, what, what did you bring to, uh, to the show today? Well, I really wanted to talk about something that, uh, you know, I think people, a book that people are excited about, Strange Tales 110, uh, it's Doctor Strange. So we had a sale on Elite Comics 11 on Instagram, a 3.5 off-white uh, white pages, and it's over $4,125. You know, I think people are really excited about Doctor Strange, and okay. yeah, it's showing in the sales. Again, another example of GPA showing the last sale uh, in May 2021 of being 38.50. So mm -hmm. not, not a big spread, but a spread nonetheless. So uh, again, you guys have DM'd me. You guys have emailed us asking about Instagram sales. Get on Instagram if you're not on Instagram already. <laughs> you're missing out. You know, you know, we we hadn't talked about this before, but I purchased something through Elite Comics 11 this month. You Mar did. <laughs> yes, I did. I purchased a Marvel Superheroes number 20, 9.6 oh, yeah. white pages. Uh, I looked at the GPA on it. GPA is only $1,700. Mm -hmm. You can't get that book for $1,700 anymore. That was from back in 2020. Uh, I paid $3,500 for it. I even tried to shave a little money off of that, and uh, the seller had already gotten a different, uh, a, a higher offer, so I just took it at retail. Um, and 3500 I thought, was a good price for that book, uh, just given that there's only 11 9.6s on the census period and only three 9.8s. 
So, you know, you could look at the disparity there. That's, that's almost uh, double of what the price is on uh, GPA. And you're forgetting one part of the story that I think is essential. The entire time, both me and Forrest, DD Comics fan on Instagram, are texting you, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John is an enabler for sure. <laughs> All right, Ali, what's the one, last one for this week? All right, the last one's a monster. So I think we've all been kind of watching Amazing Fantasy 15 go nuts. The Spider-Man fever is like just starting up. There's going to be a lot of Spider-Man to come. So what came across our page was probably the best 2.5 uh, Spider-Man number ones I've ever seen. It had everything you want. No chipping, great color. All the damage on this 2.5 is essentially on the back. Oh, so... Wow. Uh, $10,500 on it. All right. Now, this is an outlier. This is a, an extreme example. Mm -hmm. GPA, last GPA for a 2.5 was in November of 2020, and that was for half, 55 point. Now, things have gone crazy since November, and they haven't had a recorded sale. So please keep those caveats in mind. But it's just an illustration. Again, these are very clear uh, disparities and in, in, in some of these things are again happening in real time and you guys got to get on uh ali why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and bill again yeah sure like i said uh elite comics 11 it's instagram's premier consignment page it's at elite underscore comics 11 you can find us on instagram we're always taking consignments and uh you can just follow the page to see all the crazy books that come up yeah. and to be clear <laughs> Richard and I are not sponsored in any way by Elite Comics. They're not giving us any money. This was my <laughs> stupid idea. If you hate it, <laughs> you can blame me or you can give me all the kudos you want. So, As a matter of fact, they're costing me money every month. <laughs> <laughs> Raining our pocketbooks. Thank you guys both very much for joining us, and we'll see you the next time. All right. That's going to be a semi-regular feature with Ali and Bill, so make sure you keep tuning in for more of that Instagram market uh, what are we calling it? Instagram market report? <laughs> Something like market that. buzz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get on the graphic. But up next, it's a star-studded guest star-filled episode, Richard. We, who do we have next? Next, we've got Adam, better known as City Limits Comics on Instagram. Adam is a great guy. He's very opinionated. Uh, not very beloved by CGC. Uh, <laughs> you but you'll see why <laughs> you'll see why i admire him and his channel and i think you should check it out and he's here for our underrated book of the week so let's bring him on all right here he is adam what's going on man what is going on guys thanks for having me all right it's late night here in new york you pacific time you know it's funny because these people always interview me pacific time and i was like oh how's uh 9 30 pacific time i guess like 12 o'clock in the morning what do you want <laughs> you know what? Um, I am all for it. It doesn't matter. The kids are going crazy up there. I'm like, listen, you're going to put in the bed. I'm going to stay down here and we talk comic books. So we're good. Right. We're good today. So what, what is your underrated book of the week? You told us and we were kind of taken aback a bit, but I think you've got a good reasons why. It's funny because I was thinking about it the other day and it's a book that I need for my collection. And it's the one that's trailing behind as far as the old Silver Age first appearances, right? Like the main characters. I think it's Tales of Suspense 39. I was really thinking about it the other day. Um, first appearance of Iron Man, right? We all know it. The first appearance of his Iron Man suit. It's not the same color. But why isn't it getting the same money as like Fantastic Four, uh, X-Men 1? Now, it's the same situation because remember X-Men 1, I was saying the same thing. Very undervalued. Daredevil 1, very undervalued. But all of a sudden now, it started to explode. I know... Um, you know, Iron Man had his day in the MCU, and apparently MCU is what drives us comic book people. Well, some of the newer people. I'm not a big fan of how it, how it happens, but he had his day, and I feel like it just never took off. But I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I really feel Tales of Spent 39, people are going to be like, wait a minute. This book is still relatively cheap to all the other Silver Age, Silver Age classics. We should start grabbing this book. And I thought about it the other day, and that's why I'm actually trying to trade my Hulk 180, 9.0 for a Tales of Suspense 39, because for some reason, it's not getting the money or the recognition, which is mind blowing, the other books are getting. And it is the first appearance of Iron Man, one of the most beloved characters, especially mm -hmm. in the MCU times. It's funny you say that because uh, Daredevil number one, we've seen an explosion of that right. one. 
that one is always. I, you know. I call that too. I was calling that one too last year. I was like, everyone said, what book should, what, if you had $1,000, $2,000, what would you pick up? I told everyone, you better grab Daredevil one because there's no reason why any of the main core characters of Marvel, their first appearances shouldn't explode. And that's why, like I said, Tales of Suspense 39, it should be catching more money. I think even at the lower, the higher uh, grades, they are getting really pricey, but like 5.0 below, you can still get them at a decent price. 2.0, you can get like four grand, five grand. Yeah, it, it's a tough book in, in grade as well because of that cover. That cover has a it's you know tough. everything. It, the the print run it, it chops off the yes. right hand side a lot. Always so. tough, always tough book to find. That's why a lot of them are low grade. There's not that many high grades. Tells of Spence 39, but um, like I said, Tells of Spence is my personal favorite run of Silver Silver Age. I have most of them raw and the only one i'm really missing is 39 and 40 and some fillers in between but i have a pretty good decent run of that of that uh of tells of suspense great book i think that one in, in at the in the past daredevil number one fell behind because they weren't traditional lee kirby uh introduction right. yes yeah you've got exactly. Barry lieber don heck you know uh but it's time i agree yeah, it's it's really incredible. I just I it, it blows my mind, and it's funny. Like I like you said, you sprung this on me the the the, the um, underrated book of the week, and I was like, wait a minute. But it always comes to me like Tales of Spence Thirty Nine. People look at me at funny and like, oh, it's an expensive book, but I'm like, is it really that expensive compared to all the other Silver Age Silver Age classics? It's really not. So that's my pick. So you're willing to trade a Hulk one eighty cameo of Wolverine, that's not first, first appearance. appearance? First appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just poking the bear. That's all I'm doing. First appearance of first appearance of Wolverine 9.0 for a low grade copy of 39, just so I could finish off my Tales of Suspense run. I would do like a 2.0 for 2.5. I have no problem it's, with it. It's funny because uh, the the uh, okay. eternal struggle of uh, Hulk 180 versus 181 being the first appearance of Wolverine. Yeah, it, he's on the last page. It's a full page splash. He says right. his. Name. Um, what said, else well, you- and what else did they, they, they say his name, Wolverine, you know, Wolverine, and they say Weapon X. They even say both of his title <laughs> names. Like, what else? I don't know. Why, why is comic people to ignore common sense? I don't understand. We just ignore it. Okay, so let's just ignore all that because, you know, we want, and I'm not, listen, I'm not going to argue what the better book is. I hate 180. I really do personally. It's boring. It's like, it's one of the most boring reads. It's very slow. <laughs> Wolverine's in at the last panel, sure, but I'm not going to ignore common sense. Where that's where he is. I'm sorry. It's the first time. If you if we went back in time and that book would leave that day, and we read that book, we would say, "Oh, look, there's a new character, Wolverine, Weapon X. He has claws that come out of his hands, and he dresses like this." You know, right. that's his first appearance. You would see it if we went back in time. We would see it. We would know that character right there and then. But people want to well, ignore it because of the cooler book that comes next. Richard, jump in here because you and I are of a certain age, and I think a lot of it comes from Overstreet. You know, Overstreet okay. you know, get out as its first appearance back in the day. He's on the cover, right, you know, right. one eighty mm-hmm. one. <clears throat> excuse me. I think the fact that he's on the cover and and it's such an active uh, pose on the cover really kind of clouds people's minds <laughs> because if it was a if it was a blank cover for one eighty one. This argument would not be happening right now. Nope. 180 right. would be the would be the the you know his first appearance. 181 would be his second appearance, and we'd move on from there. But because of that cover and the, the value that people put to it, I think that's what's really making yeah. making people pick that book. So and, uh, listen, I I think that 181 should catch more money. I think it's a better book. It's a better cover. It's a better all around book. That I don't understand why people have to find the money to the first appearance. I mean, just because it's the first appearance doesn't mean it has to catch that money. If you have a cooler right. book that happens next, that's my opinion. But you know what? So, I think we're I think we're of different kind of collectors to be honest with you than some others. <laughs> Our two <laughs> underrated books of the week are Tales of Suspense thirty nine <laughs> and One Eighty One. That's how they, that's how these things go. They met, these conversations just morph into other things. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thank you for joining us. Tell everybody where they can find you and what you've got going on on Instagram. Oh, it's going to be at City Limits Comics, and I'm on Instagram. What do I do? I'm absolutely out of my mind. All right, I'm a collector. I like to read my comic books. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not into this investing stuff. If it's in a CGC uh, case, I probably will chop it with a sword or hit it with a nunchuck. All right, to get it out of there. Uh, or, or a power washer. 
power wash it. That didn't work. I was very I know. It didn't work. <laughs> I know. So, as I was hitting, I'm like, this is not working. This is not working. <laughs> I'm like, I got, I got, I got to go to secondary measures. I got to drop kick this thing. <laughs> but, but I like to, I listen. I like to uh, call things how they are. Right. If I see something that's out of whack in the community, and I feel like there's a lot of things that go on, especially now with new people coming in, all this investing thing, the spec books. It's just growing up when I was younger in the '90s and collecting my books. I just bought the comic book to read it. I had no clue about investing or, or speculation. Now coming up, everyone talks about every. You know, no, no one ever talks about the story. I did a live reserve right, uh, reading live. I read my book live on Instagram. No one ever talks about stories anymore. Everyone's like, "Did you see that cover? How much is this worth? How much is yeah. that worth?" And I'm just, I'm just like, well. I really not, I'm not, I'm not investing. I'm not investing for the future in my comic books. I'm really not. If they go up in price, okay. If I want to sell it, I'll sell it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I like to collect my comics, read about it, and call people out who are doing some crazy things in the comic community <laughs> that maybe can hurt others that are just coming into it. That's it. Well, you've got two kindred spirits here that love to read and collect mm -hmm. and try to keep people from buying Darkhawk number ones. Oh, uh, Darkhawk. What a great book in the name. <laughs> so, Adam, thank you very much for joining us today, and we're going to definitely have you back soon if you'll have us. Absolutely, this is a blast. Thanks, guys, for having me. Well, Richard, what do you think? Uh, those are two uh, low-key books that are <laughs> super affordable. No, but you know he's got a point. Everything, everything is relative, right? Um, and when you compare the value of that book with the other Avengers first appearances. Um, it, it is undervalued and you know, it's people, for people who have the pockets to, uh, afford that book. I think it's a good time to pick it up. Yeah. It's not Kirby. I mean, that's the one thing holding it back. It's, it's sketchy Don heck and, you know, a, a polarizing figure, but it's, it's Tony Stark. It's Iron Man. It, it, it's got a Kirby cover. It's right there with the pillars of the Marvel universe, the birth of the Marvel universe. So I, I understand what he's saying. Yeah, absolutely. All right. This was a packed episode for being a bonus episode, right? People got their money's worth this week. Yes. <laughs> Where is that money, by the way? I haven't seen any of that come in yet. Uh, but you can do us a favor. Instead of paying us, you can like this video. You can subscribe. You can hit the notification bell. You can follow us on The Modern Gods on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you next time. Everybody stay safe.